Hello, ladies and gentlemen, LMG here, and welcome to a game I didn't think I'd be covering again. Uh, I did have a really great time with it, played about 120 hours. We did have a couple runs on the channel, but it was free on Epic the other day, and it's had such a resurgence on the channel. Uh, people checking out this game for the first time. So I thought I'd like to do a hardcore, kind of a crazier run. Uh, so, alright, let's get into a new game. I did recently do a character creation kind of tips and tricks video as well. Uh, but definitely, we're going to be going tactics. But this is just to test their skills in numerous turn based battles. Live for about 50 more turns before diving permanently. Oh! I didn't even know that was a thing. Maybe they had changed that. Usually, you had a couple of turns. We woke up in a different world, where the Cold War ended along with the Vietnam carnage. All because of the dome. The dome. A territory full of anomalous artifacts, phenomena, and organisms. We still don't know what it is. An alien city? Some kind of a testing ground or storage? Whatever it is, no living thing trapped under the dome can escape it. Yet even this did not stop the research. The major powers created the Cronus Mega Corporation to develop and explore the dome. Its secrets became a lucrative business. The Spire Station was built on top of the dome to export the artifacts and import supplies and personnel. The city of Crystal Sands grew at the foot of the dome, eventually becoming a major transportation hub. All this required thousands of employees, and there was no shortage of candidates. Romantics, pragmatists, and adventurers of all trades swarmed recruiting centers around the globe, seeking jobs at Cronus. You were one of those people. In 1976, your application was approved and you went under the dome towards the future. Whether a good one or a bad one, only time will tell. A right, very good intro. I did when they added a lot of voice acting to this. I think it did up this game quite a bit in my opinion. It was the narrator. I mean, some people love him, hate him. I think it's very well done. Uh, but all right, uh, let's see what we got here. We're going to create a character, though. Create a character, put into the dome. I do love this game, though. It could get a kind of crazy uh, unbalance as well. Uh, let's just go. that be my name? If I have, I'm not that old, man. Come on. Uh, let's see. Not a lot of character customization to this one. Actually, it can make me completely... Let's... More there. Uh, not quite on the hair, though. No, that is spot on. Probably more handsome, but spot on. Okay. Now, this good we get to the wings and stuff, and I talked in that character creation video. This kind of in does change up. It's a pretty big, big decision because it does how other factions react to you, uh, how you direct to your own faction, and some of your starting bonuses as well. Now, criminal up plus 20 is not terrible. Survival, eh. But white wing, yeah, everything is divided into wings. Initial equipment, starting attributes, etc. And various dialogue options will be locked out of. Brains plus one, high tech weapons. Medicine is a good thing. Science, biochemical resistance, also not a bad choice. Blue wing is more about contraptions, tech, stuff like that, melee weapons. Learnability, your XP goes up a little bit. We kind of covered that a little bit in our low intelligence run. Had a lot of interest in that one because uh, they had a lot of low intelligence dialogue for that. But it didn't really, there was a lot of it that wasn't as well. So it was kind of a uh, lore, I like bre uh, immersion breaking for me personally. A silver wing. Now psionics, now influence is very important. 
But the psionics, we're not going to really be doing. We might, if we get some extra points later, we might go into it a little bit, but I'd rather not. It's just not, I think it's not worth it. The so silver wing, I don't know. Now, black wing, an interesting one. Because muscle, fortitude, heavy weapon, tend to hand up. Mellow weapons up in piloting. Then back to orange wing. Now, I'm going to make this a little bit more crazy because it's going to kind of go counterintuitive uh, to what I'm going to be trying to do. Because, uh, yeah, this is fortitude up, which is not bad. This gets negative physical statuses. Heavy weapons is not something... It's also the ammo is a little more rare. Well, but you know what? We're going to go Blackwing. Also, if we got a picture that would semi look like... A Blackwing person that would look like us. Uh, not really. I'll go for that, though. Close enough. You can't put your own photo in there, though, as well. Uh, this is going to probably hurt a little bit. We'll go for it. Basic physical or mental characteristics. Barely played out one and Fallout 1 and 2 and other games of this genre. You will definitely realize a lot of this. And this is kind of already catered towards uh, what we're going to be doing. We're not going to do... Yeah, low intelligence dialogue. I personally, I would recommend Fallout 1 or 2 or any of the Fallout games if you want to do that. Uh, I think it was a little bit better done. Let's just get all this out. Now, Psyche, I'm not going to put anything to Psyche. But I do want some charisma. Oh, we're going to be very charismatic. And perception is why well. I do want my perception maxed out. My brains, I don't want us insanely. I go a little bit of physical. Overall constitution. More perception though, because that's going to really affect our initiative and light weapon skill, which we're going to be using a lot of. Then we want to get our precision. Success of our remote far range attacks as well. Dexterity reaction time. Also, some. We got about. Lady Luck. So I do want to go full fortune as well. Well, that leaves me not a lot in the strength department. Definite uh, will not be as great before we'll be able to get by. So let's see. Initiative of 20. Precision, not bad. 1.1. Detection time, 4.7 though. Ooh, let's see... What else also affects that? Oh, the depthness. Oh, I don't know what else I could really... I could. Dangerous, though. A little bit to completely go out on that. What else I could cut? I mean, if you're going that way anyway, might as well go. I mean, it wouldn't be completely stupid. Five. Of. Uh, I like to have at least a little brains. Because actually, if you go in the criminal branch, you'll actually get that plus 20 to criminal anyway, so your detection time will actually be a lot better. But we still got our other abilities to go through, so let's see. That's not terrible, I would say. Alright, this is where we're just tagging skills. Uh, I definitely want to do, I think, light weapons in the beginning. Though, I've never actually done Blackwing, though, so we could actually get a heavy weapon. As well. I would like to get Criminal up, though. We're going to tag Criminal. Which lets us pickpocket, wound speed up, and the gambling cheating thing, which doesn't come into play a lot. 
do lock picking as well. Light weapons, I do want to get light weapons up to at least 48. So I do want influences. Oh, that's a tough one because I'd really love to do tech. Alright, fair enough. We got a little bit of uh, charm. A little bit of barter as well. Okay. I can live with that. Next, we can go to our traits. And you'll pick one of these up every couple uh, levels, I do believe. Now, gun fanatic. Not bad. Initiative down a little bit, so you're not going to be going first, but you're definitely going to be hitting. Critical chance one up. Now this. is not terrible because you get a plus 10 to everything. Crit damage will be up. Up 0.5%. That is not terrible. Vampire. Unless you're having fun with it. Guts up. Perk rate up plus one. Anderthal. You cannot wear pants or jackets. I, I do like that one, but... Their companions won't learn as well. Bossy Charisma plus two. Uh, don't think that's really worth the encumbrance that early in the game, though. Slow poke. Yeah, I don't think I'd really like to do that. Brains up more of a learnability down. I want to get two perk points at the start of the game, but. Three skill points when I level up every time. That would do, no. That's more about the servo shell. I think I like the penitent one. Yes. Double check the data. So let's see what we got at the end of the day here. Alright, light weapons 58. Not a terrible start. Heavy weapons decent. Uh, so if they do give us a heavy weapon uh, here at the beginning, we would uh, maybe be okay. Criminal up to 58. Influence at 60. Survival not so much. Survival happens more in, I would say, random events. More than anything. 22 hit points. Not a uh, great start, of course. XP a little bit over 100. Decent precision. Movement speed, not great. Texture time, 6.9, though. We get 14 skill points per level. Okay, fortitude, not bad. All right, let's go. We're trying to make this a little bit character, a little bit like a glass cannon. And then we pick up Crump. That'll give us some... Uh, Nice this conversation. Dialogue this to people you came to the dome with. And once as you in the beginning of the uh, intro there, you cannot, uh, once you're in the dome, no way to leave currently. And you'll see a whole bunch of stuff pop up. Actually go to our inventory real quick. We start with 40 combones. That's the money in Cronus. We've got an inactive Selectron. They'll activate that when we get there. We do have a scanner. And a third letter from Cronus. Alright. So we did get uh, a... And we were actually pretty far down on the list, but... For some reason, we got picked. Alright, so let's talk to Monty James. A guy wearing thick spectacles thrusts out a sweaty hand. Monty James. Silverwing. He glances down at your badge. Ah. <sighs> It's you. I found your file extremely interesting. And your CV, wonderful. I inspiring, really. When I had the opportunity to look over the files of my future colleagues, I couldn't resist. I don't want to sound boastful, but silver level clearance has its advantages. Monty winks. Uh, seek because, yeah, if you're uh, with different wings, similar wings, you'll have special choices. But since we're black wing, we can't really uh, do that. Monty makes a ring with his thumb and forefinger. 
Uh, you were number 63,784 on the waiting list, but you were lucky enough to get into the dome after only 16 months. Besides that, uh, zero, nada, absolutely nothing. You're a dark horse for both the Foundation and myself. Uh, how exactly did you end up in this wing? The silver peers at you more closely. Wait, wait. Let me guess. Are you a mercenary? French Foreign Legion, right? Uh, fought in Africa, Latin America? Yeah, I know, I know. You don't like to talk about it. An uncomfortable silence rises between you, and Monty abruptly changes the subject. There's a lot of dialogue recorded for this, because there's a lot of different choices. He taps the narrow illuminator panel with one finger. Uh, look, there's a storm rising. The lightning is strange. Green. Should lightning be green? Uh, this is my first sandstorm. A young, dark-haired woman is staring through the illuminator, her gaze glued to the slowly approaching desert. She's whispering softly. We've crossed the border. No way back now. She turns to you. The shiny badge on her white jumpsuit reads, Tomoko Kimura, physiologist. As the woman takes in your black uniform, her smile fades. There are six people in this capsule, two of them in black jumpsuits. Not a statistically significant sample, but the trend is evident. She says with a squint. Kimura shakes her head disapprovingly and turns back to the Illuminator. This place is a scientific treasure trove, and you're treading all over it in your jackboots, blowing up doors that are thousands of years old, acting like you own this world. What devilment. I, I just got here, lady. Uh, yeah, I gotta protect uh, the people of Cronus personnel, yeah. Kimura isn't impressed. Protecting us from the dome, really. And who's going to protect the dome from you? Uh, nobody, hopefully. All right, oh, my buddy Igor. A man with a mustache and a blue jumpsuit is standing at the window, studying the construction site below through the occasional break in the clouds. His badge reads Igor Patan, planner. The blue taps on the glass with one finger and gestures you to come and take a look. Seems like he doesn't speak English. And this is where the influence will come in handy. Using sign language, mimicry, and all of your artistic talent, you're able to communicate with the planner. Once he's sure you're watching, Patanen points up in the direction of Spire Station, from which you departed a few minutes ago. Another thing, nice thing about this game, it's got kind of a Alice glossary, and it's got a lot of tool tips. In case you don't know what something is, and it's in blue, you are in white there, you can just... Oh, so we're going to give you a summary. He sketches the outline of the station on a broad, foggy section of glass. Once he's finished, the blue turns to you with a delighted expression. The blue begins to mark up his diagram with a series of footnotes and numbers. Turns out the station's ring diameter is a bit more than 1,500 meters. Its height above the dome is 317 meters. And the total height of the spire, including the loading docks, is nearly 720 meters. With a series of competent strokes, the planner delineates the capsule's movement scheme, drive train, and massive hydraulic brakes on the glass. This time, Igor is quite laconic. He pauses, then confidently writes, cargo and personnel in block letters and draws an arrow pointing downward. Beside it, he writes relics and draws an arrow pointing up. His R is turned back to front. Yeah, because they can send inorganic stuff back. So they're selling relics to be studied, sold, etc. Uh, that would pays for all of this, of course. The engineer stops you with a gesture and after rummaging through his pockets, offers you a small candy. There is a picture of a crayfish on the white wrapper is this candy crayfish flavor i will take it thank you because you get a little bit of a bonus for that and tooth achingly sweet you can only wonder what it has to do with crayfish if it's actually eating food or taking medicine you get certain status effects all right so yeah we got about two hours and this is like real in-game time too 
Uh, it's real time. So you have about two hours of plus three initiative. Okay, we talk to Igor. Oh, what? Fellow Blackwing officer, Elsa. A tall woman is watching an ad playing on the monitor, arms crossed. The polished to a shine badge on her black overalls reads Elsa Olofsson, Security Service. She glances at you and offers her hand in a businesslike manner. Greetings. Please take all necessary precautions. By that I mean, don't turn your back on him. Elsa nods at the orange. I just follow orders. Even if his crime was embezzlement, I have to keep him cuffed. Those are the rules. Olison shrugs in a sharp, mechanical way, as if racking the slide of an assault rifle. Our friends from the administration didn't deign to inform me about this man's record. Could be I'm escorting a serial killer. It's corporate policy, you know. She gives the silver a vengeful look. It's some distrust between Black Wing and Silver Wing. The badge on the orange's chest reads Quentin Bisley, laborer. That's interesting. If you're an orange, you do get a quest in here uh, to partake of some. Uh, Picking up some goods, but I don't think we'll have it at this time. He eyes your black uniform and quickly turns away. Yeah, we're not gonna be his friend, unfortunately. You also want to take note: you can actually barter if people exist. have stuff. You have a blade. I feel like I should take that from you. That's worth 125. I could get some fish snacks though, but everybody does have a barter here. I could bribe you, but no. Monty nods at the window. Uh, enjoy the view. It's a short trip. You got some energon? Oh. Temporary plus brains. We'll head up to the window. Stopping by the door's porthole, you watch as the ground slowly approaches. It looks brown black through the tinted glass and smoky blue at the horizon. It almost seems like the clouds are pulling apart. You peer into the rusty clouds of dust blowing along a dirt road leading south. The southern sector. Every black winger has heard the whispers about Operation Simoom. A major offensive under preparation since the early days of development of the dome. Cronus is recruiting troops capable of capturing the southern territory. An area heavily guarded by the forefathers' defense systems. Maybe you yourself will end up in one of those troops. Just as you're about to move away from the window, you notice a whirlwind beginning to form above the ochre plain. The gathering storm drifts unhurriedly above the desert, a crown of green lightning flashing at its core. Clearly no ordinary weather phenomenon. It must be one of those anomalies. You freeze by the window, unable to avert your gaze. I might as well join up with the rest of the group. I think we're quite there yet, you or do I have to? to the window. A oh, we'll just, well, we'll just watch the whirlwind slowly. until land The outlines of the landing site, blurred by clouds of dust, appear behind the greenish glass of the porthole. The capsule shudders as the braking devices engage. Hey, now we're officially at the spire inside the dome. We're out, and this is actually... It'd be good at, you know, Fallout 1 and 2 vibes very heavily. Of uh, course, probably inspired from that uh, genre of games. But, yeah, it's just graphically, mechanically, it's, it's a lot better for the most part. Occasionally there is some, a little bit of weirdness, but... Usually can get some dialogue below. I guess about I to talk. That, Benny. Where do I put the loads? Miss Noya. What the hell is that supposed to mean, Benny? I didn't get a single word. You're such a drag when you're sober. My dear 
floor, okay? There's no room in the warehouse. Absolutely none. Okay, so we're getting more supplies than we can hold right here. Oh, then why didn't you say that in the first place, Mr. Mooner? Come here. Come on now, or you'll miss everything. A cheerful man in a white lab coat grabs you by the sleeve. A badge reading Ludovico Nuzzi, scientific analyst, export department, dangles loosely on his clean uniform, which still smells pungently of washing powder. Look over there! He points upward with a sharp, wide gesture and hands you his field binoculars. You raise the binoculars to your eyes. Under fourfold magnification, the whirling cloud above the rust colored plains looks even stranger. Its core glows with flickering green light and flashes rhythmically, and that rhythm seems to form a complicated pattern. Nazi bends close to your ear. Fascinating. Do you want me to bring some filters? If we intercept the red and blue spectrums, we'll see something amazing. It's like a signal, some kind of message. On a band of kinds of 30, we'd actually be able to maybe interpret a little bit of that, but uh, yeah, what are we looking at? I don't know. Ludovico laughs unnervingly and snatches the binoculars from your hands. With the binoculars raised to his eyes, he minutely adjusts the focus. It's a massive whirlwind north of Concord, and not merely some desert sandstorm. That's an anomaly. I hope it lasts long enough for me to make a proper observation. The scientist looks blankly at you, then down at his lab coat. Ah, this? This? He lets out a blaring laugh. Ludovico points at the building behind him. I work in Concord Station, categorizing relics. My job is to classify them by rarity. Then the blues package them, silvers issue the documentation, and oranges move them to the cargo capsule. Just like the one you arrived at. Nazi points upward. Then the capsule takes the relics way up there, all the way to the spire, then to Crystal Sands by the funicular. They get auctioned off and turned into money. It's not like I endorse this, but we all like ourselves a good paycheck, right? That is correct. He offers you his binoculars once again. Do you want to have a look at the spire? It's amazing. But then you can look at the spire anytime. Now that sandstorm, that's what's truly amazing. Nazi looks from you to the capsule and to the landing terminal entrance. He flings his arms up. Oh, Miss Scusi! Excuse me, I'm so sorry. You'd better get going or you'll be late for check-in. Your colleagues are already inside, and the storm is growing stronger. Yeah, the storm is growing stronger. The white mutters in fascination eyes glued to his binoculars, which is fixed on the spinning whirl of clouds. Wow, look what the wind blew in. I hope to see you again soon. All right, let's get inside. Yeah, otherwise we can't get on the bus. <laughs> All right, so we're in Spire Station finally. I only think I ran in this took about 30 to 40 hours. Doing a lot of side stuff though. In which lets you through the story well, as reveal different aspects. Let's check that with the L key. Main quest, pin quests. Let's talk about reputation. Right now we just have with the black wing right now, because we haven't really talked to anybody else right yet. These are our stats. We already have light weapons, so we do have a couple abilities. Got some heavy weapons. Nothing high tech until we get to 30. Hand to hand, we do have a little bit. I'm not going to try to use that in case we can't. Psionics, nothing really as well. Not really anything until you get to 30. Nuclear assault. Oh, that is very nice. We have that already, though. Criminal is almost up to that next tier as well. If I could get away with causing more crimes too, which is just lovely. 
Bionics plus 10. Passive for our team play. Yeah, so any fighting spirits, any companion skills buy as well. Alright, so we don't have a whole lot, so let's go accumulating some more stuff as well. There's some stuff that you can't steal in here, but some stuff is, a lot of stuff is actually okay. What do you want? Now, what are you doing, buddy? Ah, he's just repairing cables and the like. Bye-bye. Alright, so we made a friend almost. Yeah, but you can basically search about anything. Handful of earth, though. It's maybe in crafting, but I'm pretty sure. Do we need any drinks? Oh, never thought this would happen. But I do believe you are a blue. I know you're a blue wing, so you might not notice me. I think I would need a lockpick anyone would have not quite got one yet. We'll get back to that though. So this is money James again. Oh, good day. I haven't had passed enough time yet. We we just literally got here. Yeah, I can try to register you. Have a good one. Because apparently he doesn't know how to use a computer. Greetings, newcomer. Come Your Selectron has please. not been properly authorized. Oh, yeah, we can't please do that yet until I get... reception desk to register. A tall receptionist watches you from behind his desk with a bored, haughty look. He waves impatiently at you to approach. The employee glances at you indifferently. His upper lip is ever so slightly curled in contempt. All new employees must register first thing. Uh, come up to the desk, please. The nameplate on the desk tells you you're talking with Dean Rayhead, administrator. The administrator slaps himself on the forehead. Ah, I almost forgot the regulation pre-registration greeting. Just a second. Rayhead produces a reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder from beneath the desk, rewinds the tape to the beginning, and presses play. The speakers explode with a harsh, crackling sound, over which the tick-tick of a metronome slowly grows louder. Solemn music begins to play, and the administrator's face takes on a serious expression. Dear employee, on behalf of the Cronus Foundation, I, Administrator Dean Rayhat, welcome you to your new life under the dome. The administrator clears his throat and continues. By joining our company, you choose the path of science and progress. You are among mankind's best, and we ask that you live up to this. Dean squints down at the monitor. Deserve this title. Do your job honestly. Obey the law. Respect your colleagues and... The music fades and the administrator finishes his speech. And together we will build the best possible future for all mankind. Dean puts the tape recorder away. Now that we're done with the official greeting, I'll register you and upgrade your Selectron. Okay? All right, I'm ready. Dean's hands hover over the keyboard. He gives you a nod. Now let's just dictate our information. You spell out your first and last names and specify your wing, profession, and test results. The administrator's fingers fly across the keyboard as he enters your information into the Cronus database. Rayhet scans the computer screen. So your position in the waiting list was 63,784. You've been assigned to Magellan Station. A special bus will bring you there after a series of briefings. Please pass me your Selectron so I can update the firmware. Dean snaps the docking port of your pass to a recess in the casing of his computer. The administrator returns your Selectron. Here you are. You now have first level clearance. As a Black Wing employee, you get access to the barracks, the armory, surveillance rooms, remand centers, and other specialized facilities. Dean continues. All new employees have a short list of tasks to perform on arrival. Do you want to hear all the details, or just the short version? 
Let's go with the short, Dean. I, I've done this before. Snorts. To make it short, get your uniform from storage, your weapons from the armory, pass the Psy abilities test, and complete your weapons training at the training zone. Then learn how to use the scanner, avoid anomalies, and properly catalog anything you observe. Last, go to the waiting room and wait for the bus to Magellan. Dean sits back in his armchair. That's it. I hope there aren't any questions. Kind of just curious what you have. You have a little bit of money. Ooh, some energy. That's not bad, but it's insanely expensive. At least right now. Ray Hett claps his hands in satisfaction. Great. He reaches for the tape recorder, but thinks better of it. Protocol calls for a little welcoming preamble, but dash it all, that's nonsense. Welcome to Concord Station. As he's about to turn away, Dean suddenly remembers something. Oh yes, I sent your mail to your Kairos. Check your new messages. Well, that's all, I think. Okay, so let's go check our email. This is explaining computers. An orange ring. No, let's just log in first. Do we have any news? It's been five years since the been discovered, of course. They're just telling us what we're doing. Log out and get back in. And we'll just register Monty. We got plus five reputation up with Silverwing. Just great. And we add you to the database. And we got a little bit of XP for that as well. Come back again. And couldn't help but notice you kind of just, uh, a lock picking is actually good enough. We don't need a lock pick. Oh, some money. We got some clothes. And the dome is your new home leaflet. I'm gonna take everything. We got a little bit of fatigue. Nothing terrible, though. I'm not good, quite good enough to do that. Get in. I'm not saying steal everything, but steal anything of value. Expectant. Piece of cloth. Yes. I do believe there's a special... Uh, if you get a certain amount of money before you leave here. And lockpick, actually. Okay, very nice. Not let's pick a lock without getting any fatigue. Ah. We also got relief, so we have that for about 30 seconds. We'll get out a little bit of radiation. I'll check all the toilets just in case now. Ah. So good. Then hands, we get bigger. It starts to quench a little bit. Dry and warm. Oh, very nice. Getting a lot of buffs. Okay, so we're in. And, of course, it's pretty easy to tour. You can actually skip past that if you can talk your way through it. What do you want? Can I go to the waiting room and cut through all this? Oh, I can persuade you. Bye bye. So we can actually go up over here. And you can actually skip all that if you really wanted to. We're just gonna go looking for stuff, though. No worries. I actually got some air gun pallet. Oh, some ore, which we'll be using upgrade stuff for later. So we want to hold on to that. We don't want to sell that if we can avoid it. 
Robo charger. Ooh. That adds something I want to depends on the price you might want to sell early because you can't really use that yet. I already got a weapon. Go check this out. They like the dome. Um, I think going around to here. Hey, what are you doing here? How do you like the dome? Come back again. All right, so let's get back in and continue our looting. Then we'll probably go to the first step because it's definitely worth doing. I like to open up this back area. See what we can grab. Because then we can actually skip ahead to getting out here, but we can't actually leave though, unfortunately. Can I just... I'm gonna handpick this lock. I'm not gonna worry about fatigue too much yet. Hey, I'm free! Alright, let's go. Not now. Yeah, they will all say not now because I'm not supposed to technically be here. Not now. Yeah. Not now. And then all of a sudden he speaks English. Oh. Not for 20 bucks, no. Nope. Let's search all it here. Yeah, we can't actually get out. Ooh, five bucks though. Then we have the, we can crash them for the fire post, but we can't really. Yeah, we don't have enough gunsmithing to do that. Not now. Not now? Yes. And tin can, scissors. Making lockpicks later. And I got a mob. Alright. A very quiet melee weapon. So sure that mop will come in handy. We'll can just sell that. XP for using that door panel though. More importantly, can I? I don't think I can get in that door though. I mean, technically, I am Blackwing, so you would think that would be okay. Let's get a bunch of stuff to sell. Blue though, I'll take that. We successfully looted the back area here. Unless there's really like a red over it, it is not stealing. This is just borrowing. Ooh, mine clearance would not be a terrible idea. Ooh, fixer as well. This should sell for well. I think the loot is a little bit randomized as well. Right, oh, Sydney, I do like Sydney. Behind the storage counter, you see a small, neat guy. His gingery hair shines with something like brilliantine. His badge says, Sidney Maynard, storekeeper. The silver perks up at your approach. A thick logbook appears at once from under the counter. Sidney puts on thick glasses that seem to age him five decades in an instant and studies the lined pages. The silver finally stops and pins down a particular page with his finger. This is your first uniform requisition, right? You can also purchase any equipment you need for the desert directly from me. Maynard adjusts his glasses in a business-like manner. And 
Before I give you the uniform, please listen to these short instructions. Sidney fiddles with his hairstyle. So, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Life under the dome can be dangerous. You may get shot, spill acid on yourself, get electrocuted, or suffer the effects of a dangerous anomaly. You may also freeze to death or get fried. That's why it's important to wear protective equipment when traveling outdoors. Of course, in hazardous situations, the equipment will get damaged, and the more it's damaged, the more often one has to repair it. The Silver steps back from his counter to indicate the repair kit boxes piled in the back of the warehouse. He points back at the shelves behind him. We've got repair kits for this gear. There are Blue Wing specialists ready to help you at any large base, of course, but they're not always available, so... You'd better learn how to use repair kits and workbenches on your own. It's a useful skill. Sidney rests the logbook on the desk. That's all the instructions. Now, I'm going to issue your uniform. The silver disappears into the back for a while and returns with a small package. Unfolding the package, Maynard shows you a brand spanking new uniform. Standard issue blackwing equipment, trousers, boots, jacket, Everything is stain resistant and armored. Bear in mind, this gear is made from all natural materials. Oh, Cronus takes care of its employees. He says with a bit of swagger. He raises a finger. One more important thing. In accordance with Order 16-225, helmets and gloves are not issued, but they're available for purchase from me. Please bear in mind that a full set includes headgear or a mask, Jacket, trousers, gloves, and boots. Like a real corporation, we're already getting hosed. Sydney hands you the package. Here's your uniform. Enjoy. Okay, well, let's get dressed first. See what we're working with. So basically, we've got... We're wearing stuff, but we're not really wearing stuff. Universal boots, plus one initiative. Alright, so we get some defense class mechanical resistance. A little bit of overall resistance. Yeah, very nice. A little more resistance. Saved AP plus one. Hey, not bad. Maynard puts his glasses on again. You again? Pretty sure you got your uniform already. Anything else I can do for you? The silver assumes a serious expression. There's nothing I can do about that. It's a result of the recent cost optimization order. Luckily, you can purchase these items from me. At market price, but yeah. Silver right. scribbles something in his logbook. Please come back anytime if you need something. Now first we're going to stick about trading. Ah, uh, we could sell that. I'm not gonna worry too much about that. The crowbar, I would like to keep that. Wrench. Feel like it comes down to that, we're probably already in trouble. At 42. I'm being crafting later, but let's. Not for five. I didn't get the full price from this yet as well. Duct tape, you want to keep that. The ore we will take, though, even though it's not a great price. So 180. Keep that. Keep the those pellets in two just in case. Keep the tin can. Mop's gotta go. 192. This is not terrible. Let's take the fixer as well. So 242. Not terrible. Oh, I should get the money. You want to get the money first. Yes. Do not give. I have actually done that before. So we're up to 302. Not terrible. We still got a lot to search. Anything urgent, Mr. Krachkov? Katarzyna, did you mark it as. Ah, Katarzyna, we'll be meeting her a lot later. Here's the scanner data. It says the relic is a scientific device. Wait, but it's still class one. I'm not going to violate protocol. Katarzyna, my dear. You may violate protocol as long as it benefits the company. Take your lead from your colleagues. 
Correct your report if you have to, and don't act so innocent. Vladimir, oh, there's a lot of uh. Class too fragile. Tell Noyan the relic should go out with today's flight. Think about it. A class two relic will mean a bigger payoff for the company. A little bit of corruption going on in Cronus. Categorizing it as class two means access to state sealed figs. Remember, our honor to work will make the world a better place. All right, Mr. Kroshko. Where is it? I've got it. I couldn't uh, break that lock right now anyway. Oh, we'll take that. All right, Margarita. I do like Margarita. The smell of good tobacco wafts off this tall, portly woman from a meter away. A black lacquered pipe, an open logbook full of signatures, and a metal flip calendar sit on the counter in front of her. A small nameplate reads, Margarita Tukachenko. The woman fixes her coppery hair with one hand and casually lights her pipe. To what do I owe the pleasure? Margarita thumbs back a couple of pages in her logbook. I see. This was your first receipt. She glances at her Kairos, looks at you, snorts, and retreats to the shelves. A couple of minutes later, Tekachenko returns holding a small pistol. Ah, so we do get a small weapon, which she would actually be better for us. She puts the counter and strokes the Bakelite grip with a strange affection. Pistols are good. Not for everyone. One needs a special skill set. The black draws the slide with a snap, pops out the magazine with an almost imperceptible movement, and slams it back in place. It's reliable. Has a nice heft, too, so even if it jams, you can always smack him on the head with it. Takachenko slides the pistol across the counter. Uh, I think we should go to, yeah, we'll, we'll go with light weapons. Margarita drags on her pipe and releases a puff of thick Attention. yellow smoke. Attention. I see you know the rules and won't cause problems. The black points at a poster on the wall behind her. Can you see what's written there? Clean and oil. I have nothing to add. Tekachenko tamps down her tobacco. Nice accuracy, but the stopping power is too low to call it a killing machine. Still, it's an all-around excellent weapon. The armorer shrugs, puffing indifferently on her pipe. It's the least I could do. We have a requisition list from the Silvers. For free, you receive only rubbish. If you want the real deal, check out the weaponry shop. Or me. Wait a minute. Sign your name here in the meantime. Margarita reaches under her counter and produces a set of ammunition. A new set of ammo is issued for every task, but there's so much bureaucracy you'll go daft. Expenditure report. Form number 16. Disposal form. The silver's running true to form. So if you need more ammo, I recommend you either search or barter for it, or learn how to craft it on your own. These are useful skills. Trust me. Leaning over the counter, the black points somewhere off to one side. Now it's time for your training. Father B is already waiting for you by the big gate. He's a bit dotty, but a good man nonetheless. But before the training zone, go see that wizard guy with his toothpicks. Be careful around him, though. Don't let him pitch you a line. Psychic my ass. She winces in disgust. Okay, so can we... I do not want to bar bribe, though. No, we're trying to make money. Of course, we can't do all if we want to check everything there. Can I actually look at your notebook? Oh, I don't think I've ever actually looked at this before. Try to grace. Okay, interesting. No XP out of that, though. Tukachenko grunts a greeting without removing the pipe from her mouth. Mm. Just tell me what you want so we can. Tukachenko opens the big. Okay, so. That is the Dracon that is heavy weapons. Not bad. We've got our damage is. Yeah, 12 to 15, which is decent. Tasers. We're going for like a pacifist run. Bullets. Got about 42. It's not a bad deal though. I sell that for 15. I don't feel like that's really worth it. 
Raven is your chance three percent versus what's mine. That's base. Yeah, it is the same model. All right. Save money for now. We're gonna try to make as much money as we can. Three bucks. I'll take it. I'll complain to the Silvers about that idiot. They'll take the appropriate measures. All right, before we talk to him, though, let's get through this door and go to task number three. In case of damage, your life will be forfeit. Oh, another mob. Some okay. I'll just take all that. They won't notice. Ooh, we have a safe though. I don't know if I could get. The learning your locker is okay. But this would be interesting. A lean silver with thick black hair and a huge cigar clamped in his teeth is sitting in front of you. As you approach, he flashes a sly grin and slowly raises an outstretched hand above the table. Something really weird happens. All the paper clips, pencils, scattered toothpicks, and bits of trash float up from the table and hang in the air. The silver badge reading Andre Mihai, science instructor, floats up as well. I'm not going to give him the bad <clears throat> joy of that. <laughs> Here for the briefing, huh? Shall we get to it? He takes the cigar out of his mouth and exhales a lush cloud of smoke. The silver props his elbows on the table. Anyway, here's the deal. It's more profitable for people with a high psyche to study psionics. Give me your hand. Not waiting for an answer, he grabs your hand with strong, dark fingers. Andre gropes your hand briefly, then lets go, disappointed. The pills, uh-huh. The anti-migraine, sleeping pills, neuroleptics, downers. What do you mean you don't take them? Well, off you go then. That means no talent, uh-huh. Why waste time? No wasting time now. But alas, regulations demand it, so I'll give you a glove too. Regulations, uh huh? The silver takes a thin glove covered in talc from his desk and passes it to you. Look, a glove, right? But it isn't just a glove. This is an ooh mama hold me tight glove. It takes energy from your noggin, your psyche, and pew concentrates it. He counts off on his fingers. Learn psionics. Put on the glove. Transform energy into the necessary shape. That's the whole briefing. Simple? Simple. Now to your questions, huh? The silver takes a pull at his cigar and releases a self-important puff of smoke. Psionics. It's a gift for all of us. The forefathers took off someplace. Poof. Gone. Only the dome remains. And this. Psionics, huh? He rocks back in his armchair, puffing on his cigar. The toothpicks again slowly rise up from the table. Mihai spreads his dark hands. Toothpicks hover around his head in a kind of halo. Scientists say everyone has an organic skill called psyche. You have it, I have it, everyone has it, uh-huh. Big psyche, you got talents. Small psyche, no talents. You'll need to carry a lighter all your life. All right, but I can't know if but notice you're safe though. Wonder if I got behind you. I'm gonna go sit for a second. Let me get in the corner. I'm gonna call security now. You goddamn ninja. Okay, maybe. Maybe go out a little bit. Where I got ideas. I got ideas here. I stealth mode allows you to steal move without being detected by your opponent. Just gotta be careful. They'll all stand there so they won't see me. He's actually right over there. This needs... Fortunately... Really? I couldn't get that. Evidence in a business kitchen. And found a crime scene. There's a witness nearby. Okay. Relic dust. Taking it.
Was there a crime? I don't think so. I don't know who would do such a thing. Obviously, not me, who is not a criminal. Well, obviously, did no such thing. Yeah, I don't know who did that. Uh, was not me. What if I can go through that door? I think I actually could, just to avoid him. Just in case. Sydney, would you like to take the stolen goods? Maynard puts his glasses on. Sydney adjusts his glasses. Sure, I'll show you what we've got. You know, we're pretty... Sydney yeah, yep. scribbles something Thank you, Sydney. in his logbook. Please come back anytime if you need something. And Psyche for us is not really going to be a thing, so... The 75, I'll take it. Attention, attention. Please Relic dust. Carefully. We'll use for upgrades later. 141. I'm also going to take uh, the shirt. Unfortunately, not a lot to do after that. Oh, remember your money. Okay, so 448. And I don't think I actually talked to you. I apologize. Or no, I did, did, I did. Well, what again? I hope to see you again soon. Okay, so he is... I don't think he'll notice us. Nope, I think he's... Am I confused? So I'm just gonna... I don't think he's understood. Oh, wait. Um, let's go talk to you real quick. Ooh, what do you want? What do you mean you caught me? It'll never happen again. Scream. Measures. I hate those oranges. What the hell do they break? The problem is like there is no way he could have known it was me. They'll take the. An engineer in a bright blue jacket is tinkering with the door lock, cursing under his breath nonstop. Blowing a curly strand of hair off his forehead, he turns to you. You're a newcomer, right? It's a straight-up open house here today. He offers you his hand. According to his badge, this is Maxim Penkovsky, technician. The technician slaps the door with one hand. You have to wait until I'm done. Some orange jammed up the lock with chewing gum just for a laugh. They're like animals, those oranges. Marking their territory. If you ask me... They're too gracious about those bastards in Crystal Sands. Penkovsky grunts angrily. <laughs> I wish I could. I'm gonna have to disassemble, clean, and reassemble it to get it working. It's work I don't need, and all thanks to some idiot. Maxime extracts a thin, sharp, precision probe from behind his ear and dangles it in front of you. Though there's another way. You want to learn something about picking locks? It's a useful skill in all sorts of situations. He looks at you expectantly. Attention. The blues getting excited. All right, looky here. Penkovsky presses his pick lock, and an odd device resembling a hybrid of a screwdriver and a can opener into your hand. Using a mechanical pick lock is easy peasy. No special skill required. They wear out after a few locks. While the old fashioned kind is another thing entirely. Cheap, one use. But one has to know how to use it right. That's a tool for a master. Maxi gives you a quick lesson on how to pick a lock. By the way, you can carry your tools in your belt. It's much handier to have them right there. Penkovsky shows you his utility belt, where he keeps all kinds of tools and gadgets. Actually, finding tools under the dome is no problem at all. There are even devices for hacking terminals and so on. Maxime hoists up his belt. The blue solemnly raises his index finger. And one more thing. Always use brand name stuff if you can. Groovy produces good kits. Modus and Supercolor do too. They've all got fat contracts with Cronus, so they care about quality. He looks at the door again. Damn these locks. Though I'd rather be doing this than fixing hab pods. Those are a real pain in the ass. Penkovsky gives you a patronizing look. Because they're poorly made. Warp from the heat, and the filters aren't worth a damn. The modules were constructed by marketing managers, not engineers. Building a city in the desert was also their idea. This project is all about PR. Cronus wants to show the world how tough they are. 
You do have 85. Alright, I will unlock that real quick. I repeat, get a lock pick and attach it to your utility belt. Nah, I'm okay right now. Um, apply it to th You're doing great. Alright, off you go. I'll keep working on this lock because of that orange. Hey, oh. I'm generally curious though. Could I? Can I? All I really want. Yeah, yeah, that's how that's careful. Run. Damn, can't believe it. I'm surrounded by thieves. Just go. We'll go around the other way. Also. Hey. Yeah. from third deck. Nope, just go. I think we're okay. Alright, very good. I got 85 bucks. I don't think it's worth it to steal anybody else's, though. Oh, though. Wait, wait, wait. I wonder. Because we're not doing too shabby. About up to almost 500. I can still go get, because I'd like to get a backpack. So what is our inventory? Very weight. 29. It is not spectacular. I really should have robbed Monty now that I think about it. I just want to no, pick your pockets. And bye. Robbed again. Ah, who would do that? Wow. Even when I was a criminal, I did play this more legitimately than I am now. This is great. I don't think he will leave the area, though. But if we came back, we would be uh, caught. Um, but really, we're about at an hour right now. We have not actually gotten out of the station yet. But I think I will leave it off here. Right now we're about at, uh... What is it? Because it's stolen money? Oh, so technically it's... Each thing is stolen, it's different, so it doesn't go in with the clean money. Alright, everyone organized it, but alright, I hope you guys enjoyed. Yeah, so it's a new start of a hardcore run. I'll probably record a couple of these ahead of time. Uh, I might get a little bit way through the series. Uh, just before I put it out so I have a little bit of a buffer. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next episode.